Everybody, I'm back with another video and just wanted to show some of the uh, the recent pickups I've got in the the last week and a half or so. Uh, starting here with uh, some old school 1962 uh, top stamps. I uh, bid on a couple Jim Bunnings with the hope of at least getting one. I managed to win both. Uh, both got them at a good price. As well as a couple more stamps I got in that same auction here uh, from my Marischal and early win collections. Now these stamps, uh, they look really well for excellent in sixes. Um, this is the second year they did the stamps. They did them in 61. Those ones are just black and white. And they're kind of or more ornate. But I do like the color backgrounds of these 62s a lot. Another really neat item here is this uh, 1964 Topps Photo Tattoos. This one's a Frank Robinson. It's graded a, a 1, for, so very poor. And if you can see, there's a, like a little tear in it on the top. But let me flip over the back and I'll show you kind of why these are so difficult. They came in these little uh, photo tattoos, kind of like a little pamphlet. So when you peeled it off, the adhesive on the back side would, would cause some tearing or possible tearing. So this, these are pretty rare, hard to find. So I kind of threw out the grade when it came to this and I just really wanted something, uh, something unique for the Frank Robinson collection and picked it up. Now this is a card, I have this one right here, this is Bob Gibson, uh, Kellogg's. This is a card I've been waiting to buy for about five years. So I have this card in a near and a mint nine, but it's the uh, the variation that's uh, more common and easier to find, which shows his innings innings pitched in 1959. This one is the innings pitched blank for 1959. Let me flip it over to you. You can kind of see there. There's a, just nothing there for that innings pitch. It's really tough to find. And they, they've had one uh, up on eBay for some time. Someone's got a mint nine, but they're, they're wanting close to $300 for it. So every time I see it, it kind of taunts me. But uh, I'm just not in a position to pay $300 for that card. This one came up on eBay. Uh, four sharp corners headed up. And I'm uh, sure it's only an excellent five. It's got, a, uh, it's got a crack right here, which is very common for those Kellogg's cards. And uh, so this came up. It was for $4.99. I snatched it up as quick as I could. Uh, normally when I'm buying from Four Sharp Corners, I'll just kind of wait and then go on their website and buy in bulk. But I didn't decide to do that this time. I didn't want to wait any more time, so I went ahead and went and grabbed it uh, before it was gone. Uh, another interesting item here, uh, I've got my, my first Mike Ryan autograph. I do collect Mike Ryan, and I've got a separate video just for my Mike Ryan collection. Uh, if you're interested in why I collect them, uh, this is a good backstory on that as well. So you can check that out. And then uh, the Lou Brock, uh, at the time this was made in 79, he was the, uh, the season and the career stolen base leader before Ricky Henderson uh, came on the scene the next year in 1980. That's an Amit 9. Then a player that doesn't get the credit he probably deserves is Willie Stardroll. 82 was the last year he played. Uh, I just bundled this with a couple other cards on the cheap. I've got a few Stargill cards, but uh, maybe we'll be looking forward to getting some more in the future. And then uh, this is my second Randy Johnson card. I've got his upper deck rookie as well. But this is the, uh, the Fleer Glossy from 1989. This one's got the, the ad completely back, blacked out behind him. Uh, there are other variations that are show. I believe it's a marble sign. They just thought it was inappropriate for kids, so they blacked it out. And then another card I bought on the cheap, this 91 Leaf Gold Rookies here, uh, celebrating Nolan Ryan's seventh no-hitter for my Nolan Ryan collection. And coming down here to a couple vintage basketball, if they'll focus. This Adrian Daintley rookie uh, and an eight. A really good score from the 80s, late 70s. And then Kevin McHale, a key player on those great Celtics teams from the 80s. And then uh, in 89, they came out with these collegiate collections here. And they had, I think, maybe six of these Michael Jordan cards that were really popular when I was a kid. I got that one really cheap as well. You, can, you shouldn't have to pay much for these if you get them. Here's, uh, here's probably my steal of the week. Uh, this is an SGC graded card. And I do have some SGC graded stuff. Uh, if you'll see on some of my other videos. I don't have any... Um, I mostly am a PSA guy, I'll be honest with you. I don't have any of the Beckett grade. I don't have a single Beckett graded stuff. But this SGC has been around a while. Uh, I bought this probably for half the price it would have been for a near mint 7 from the, uh, if it was in a PSA holder. And looking at it, it's, a, it's an extremely sharp card. The only issue would be the centering uh, off a little bit on left to right. 
but corners are good, colors good, everything's good on this card. And uh, that kind of begs the question, now what do you think of SGC? Uh, is, it a, is it as comparable to PSA? Uh, they don't tend to sell as high as PSA graded cards, but I still view them as a very reputable company. As a matter of fact, in my most recent Probstein order, I got a, a flyer for an advertisement for SGC grading services. So uh, yeah, go ahead and post below if you, if you have an opinion on SGC cards. Uh, and then moving up here, uh, as I wrap this up here, this uh, 1971 Milk Duds Willie McCovey. I do have a couple of these Milk Duds cards. They don't, I would say they don't grade particularly well. This one is an excellent Mint 6. And as you can see, it still has very good eye appeal, very sharp. I've got the Bob Gibson and the Frank Robinson as well. And they are just uh, fours, and they're just equally sharp. Probably the best looking fours I've seen. But uh, for whatever reason, these milk duds in the in the full carton don't grade as well, maybe as the, if you were to cut it apart. And then lastly, uh, in tune with some of my re uh, recent activity, I, I purchased some more of these uh, first day covers, starting with this Willie Stargell. He uh, passed away, unfortunately, in 2001. So you don't see as much of his stuff out there that's graded as you would some of the more modern stuff. That was... Uh, kind of before the era of all the on-card or the sticker autographs came uh, came around in the mid-2000s. mid, mid -2000s. He does have some stuff. I think he did a, a Nabisco uh, set back in the 90s. But for the most part, he's a, he's a tough autograph to find. And then you've got another a Hall of Famer, uh, Bob Lemon. I collect some of his stuff. And then a uh, Don Sutton. I have a Don Sutton collection, although it's kind of uh, one of my back burner collections. I'm not really... I don't really look hard for his stuff but I do have a nice collection of his uh, vintage stuff but I uh, finally got his autograph and then another autograph I've been looking to get a uh, really underrated player but a really fantastic pitcher was Warren Spahn uh, a great Hall of Famer on those great uh, Braves teams they're teaming up with with old Hank Aaron but once again that's kind of a wrap up of what I've gotten in the last uh, last 10 days or so once again, everybody, I appreciate your posts and comments below, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks.